Welcome, friends. Welcome back to Cocktails After Dark, a little uh, video series where I'm exploring cocktails and testing them out with different types of base spirits to find out what suits me best, and hopefully it'll help you figure out what you'd like to drink as well. And today we're going to do a cocktail published in 1937 that is just called Chartreuse Cocktail. And I am, I am a big fan of chartreuse, and it's one of those things that when I say to people, hey, have you tried chartreuse? They look at me and go, no, you know what? I see it in the, in the liquor store, but I pass it by because I don't know what to do with it. Um, and I really like chartreuse in gin cocktails, and we've done a couple of gin cocktails with it. This cocktail uses um, bourbon or straight rye. So the recipe is written bourbon or straight rye. So I'm going to give it a go with bourbon, and I've got some Woodford Reserve, uh, kind of a middle-of-the-road bourbon, I think. And for rye, I'm going to use Dillon's straight rye, 100% rye. It is made at a distillery down in Niagara, so very close to where we live here. And at the same time, I'm going to mix up the one with the Woodford bourbon, and we'll do them both and see how they differ in taste. Now, I had thought about the Canadian Club, uh, mostly because the Canadian Club could have been on the bar back in 1937 when this, uh, when this drink was published. Um, and it's very common, you can find it today everywhere. The Dillon's not so much, but I really like the flavor on the Dillon's. So next in is the Chartreuse, a half ounce into each one. And then white vermouth, and it's the same thing, half ounce. Now, I hear a lot of people out there screaming at the camera uh, that I don't know what I'm doing because this drink is too small. And I hear you. A lot of drinks are published as parts. One part this, half part, quarter part, whatever. Uh, allowing you to scale the cocktail to whatever you want. This cocktail was very significantly written in ounces. The instructions are in ounces. And part of that reason is... Prior to World War II, um, cocktails were smaller. Uh, cocktail glasses were smaller. A lot of cocktails were only two ounces. And I mean, if you look at, this is a pre-World War II martini glass and a post-World War II martini glass, uh, you can see that they are uh, slightly different size. So a lot of cocktails were smaller. Um, you weren't meant to, you know, go to the bar really and get hammered on one thing. You might try two or three different cocktails uh, while you were there. You wouldn't maybe drink the same thing the whole time. So, stir with a little bit of ice. And we're stirring both to chill the cocktail and to add some dilution of cold water. Okay, so our cocktail glasses are chilled. We'll get rid of the ice. And this first one is the Dillon's. And the second one is the Woodford Reserve. Now right off the top you can tell that they're different colors. Um, and that's just based on the base spirit. The, uh, the Woodford is much darker in color. And it says to garnish with a cherry. So, cherry goes in. So here we are, 1937 Chartreuse Cocktail. One made with rye, one made with bourbon. But before I taste them, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, it just occurred to me that this will go live New Year's Day 2020. So happy new year to everybody, and thank you for all of your love and support through 2019. Hopefully uh, I can keep it up in 2020, but it's all because of you, so thank you very much. Okay, the first one I'm going to try is the Dillon's, 100% rye. Um, color is different. Interesting. Okay. Um, very spicy, very spicy notes. And the spicy notes of the rye are really pulling in the woody notes of the chartreuse. Let me bring the chartreuse back. One of the things I really like about chartreuse is the, the herbal notes and the woody notes. When you, 
when you smell it, it has a really woody, woody presence, and I like that. And it's a little bit sweet. So you're getting a little bit of the sweetness and the woody from the chartreuse mingling really well with the spicy of the rye. Maybe a little bit of sweetness from the cherry that I put in at the end. But not too much. Um, how do I say this nicely? Not a beginner's cocktail. If I had tried this, though, um, when I was first starting to explore cocktails, I probably would have said, no, I don't like that. Thanks very much. Give me a beer. Um, as I've sort of explored flavors, I think this is good, but it is challenging. So let's try the one with the bourbon. Uh, No, no, I don't like that at all. I really don't like that one at all. Um, I, there's something about the interplay between the bourbon, the chartreuse, and maybe the, the dolan um, that all I'm getting is oak, you know, that oak barrel flavor. And I, I don't like that at all. And it may not be a problem with bourbon. It may be a problem with this bourbon. Maybe this particular bourbon doesn't suit my flavor profile in this mixture. Um, but it's overwhelmingly, that, overwhelmingly that, uh, that oak barrel is what I get. No. No, if you presented that to me um, at a bar, I wouldn't finish it. Even, even at this stage in my development, as someone who's trying to figure out cocktails, I would not finish that one. This one with the rye, though. And it could be, it could be this rye. This is a fairly lightly, a lightly flavored rye. It's a little bit sweeter. I mean, it does have that spicy note. And so there you go. This is, this is where, you know, if, if I'd been given this, I would say, no, I don't like a chartreuse cocktail. Sorry, thanks, it's not for me. And then I might not have explored it farther. But I know that since I kind of like this one, that there probably is a very good combination of chartreuse, rye, bourbon whiskey, um, you know, sort of in there somewhere. Uh, and then also, I guess, the vermouth. Um, I really like this Dolan vermouth. Switch out the vermouth and you probably have a completely different cocktail again. And maybe a different vermouth would flavor this one better. So, again, we come to the conclusion of one of my cocktail videos and realize that it really, flavor depends on your base spirit and you swap out the base spirit and you're gonna completely change or could completely change the flavor makeup of a cocktail. And what it takes is a little bit of experimentation to find the right one for you. And you have to be willing to take those steps. And for a lot of people, that's not gonna work. And I understand that. I mean, you, some of these alcohols are fairly expensive and you're gonna buy a bottle and say, well, I'm gonna spend the entire bottle finding that one cocktail that I like with it. So if you've got something that works and something that you like, um, let us know in the comments down below. Let us know in the comments down below if you've ever tried this cocktail or if you've tried chartreuse and what you're mixing it with. And I will try to explore that further in 2020. As always, thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Here's to 2020.